Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charmley, and this is another video in the series on Cheshire churches. Now, this is the church of St. Bertolin Bartholomew. It's a wonderful example of the, the big 15th century perpendicular Cheshire churches. It's made of the common red sandstone, and it's just a wonderful example of one of these big Cheshire churches. It's not very far from the M6, tucked away in the middle of this very beautiful, picturesque village. So let's have a, a look around this church, and I'll point out, as usual, some of the um, important and notable features. And so here we are, as usual, starting at the West End, and you can see here is a nice solid font. It does look to be older than the church, and the suggestion understandably that there was indeed a church here back in the Norman period before the present building was constructed. Just hear the bells, it's just gone 10 o'clock here, I think. Um, now as usual, or as is very common, there's been a Victorian restoration here, not too bad a one, you've got the as uh, big solid pews. This church, the the patrons were, well the patrons of the Earl of Crewe, were Lord Crewe, and Lord Crewe put a lot of money into this. And you see, again, we've got these relatively slender arcades, these massive great windows, all these sort of features of this 15th century, late 14th, early 15th, into the 16th century, the perpendicular style. And What's now the vestry, you can see here at the, was it the vestry, anyway, whatever it is at the west, at, at the east end of this north aisle here, that screen is medieval, so that screen is going to be 15th century, it's obviously been restored, and it's now, it's now, now the organ screen, but clearly it's what, uh, Perhaps 16th century, the Crewe family chapel, I would expect. Um, and then you have this uh, organ is given, and it now becomes the organ screen. I say 16th century, but clearly this panel here is later than the other panels. But there we are, the, all the usual. In these things have always, these churches have always been altered a lot over time. You've got a little face up there, rather uh, notably and around into the into the nave again and there we have again this screen around the uh, um and the crew chapel as was because you've got lord crew and the family as the patrons an awful lot of money is available for restoration in the 19th century no expense spared really and it's, it's all done quite well. It's not incredibly high church here, although there is a, a certain high church, and there always, always, or there usually was, unless you were a very determinedly Protestant nobleman. Um, I've got these medallions here. Um, this is the War Memorial. You can see there with the, the cross and the sword. And then there's the Second World War Memorial, just two men there. Communion table is quite interesting. It is a table rather than an altar, although it has been pushed back altar wise along the wall. Um, and there's the east window Christ in majesty with the saints. It's the, uh, the Te Deum. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the, Lord. all the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting, and so on. And then we have the crew chapel as is. We saw the old crew chapel. This is the crew chapel as is. Um, built out in yeah, 1600, and it's a mortuary chapel, it's a memorial chapel, so um, it's kept locked because of the valuable memorials in it. Uh, it's normally the case, but you can see here we have Lady Crewe there in the middle, um, Sybil first, wife of the Mar Marcus of, of Marquis of Crewe, dies aged 30 in 1887. Um, 
and you can just about see there, there he is, just to get the camera properly on him. That is Robert Forshurst, the last pre-Reformation rector here. Um, so, uh, you have a very grand chapel, because of course the crew, family, very important nobility. And back into the church. And now, we'll have a closer look at the paintings either side later, but first of all, that roof, that again is medieval. Uh, or the late medieval, or perhaps early, early modern, but very good example, sort of solid, but very low pitched, because that is the fashion in these perpendicular churches. Uh, it proves usually covered with lead, which unfortunately, of course, in recent years, with people being uh, greedy and that kind of thing, has led to a lot of theft. People going up on the roofs and stripping the lead off. There we have a Victorian eagle lectern in behind a pulpit. Victorians have this rather regrettable habit of stone pulpits, so it's good to see a wooden one here, even if it is on a stone base. And we move into then the, the side chapel. You can see here you've got uh, the side chapel table. You've got these stalls. Um, and, of course, the crew chapel there. Um, there is a modern history display here, which is rather good. Um, and this is the historically the oldest church in Britain, dedicated to Bertolin, and the only one yeah, pre nineteenth century well, pre 20th century even, to to be dedicated to St. Bertolin. Bertolin is a little-known saint, um, but local, local. So 8th century, local is said to have performed a miracle here on the site. And there are a few bits of the Norman church here, given that this is a church that's dedicated to a local saint. 8th century tells us the church has been here been in church here for over a thousand years. Um, <laughs> now here we have, this is an interesting look at that, is not this the first I have chosen to let the oppressed go free? And you'll notice that behind the slave who is throwing off his chains is the Union flag. So this is celebrating the abolition of slavery in the British Empire. Um, and the abolition, of course, the slave trade itself. Your usual memorials, and here we have now the Victorian window. List of rectors. Always interesting to look at these things because they, they can give you some idea of the history. So we have. The first recorded rector is in 1303, but there would have been more before then. Um, there is no change in 1660 or 1662, which suggests that the rector here conformed. Um, we've got a number of crews, so that also tells you something um, about the, the family. Now, here we have these paintings. Now, this is Moses and Aaron, and... Before the 19th century, it was very common to have paintings of Moses and Aaron in churches, either side of the Ten Commandments. So this is Moses, obviously. You see here he has his rod, and it dates from perhaps the, the latter part of, or the second half of the 18th century. Um, and then on the other side, we have Aaron. One of the great things about this ecclesiastical art is that there is a definite style to it. So, of course, Aaron, you always know Aaron because he's in his high priestly robes. This is one interpretation of what the high priest would look like in ancient Israel. So, most most interesting. And here we have an old Reredos. This would have stood originally behind the communion table, and it's been moved into the tower, which is as you can see, the tower is now the main entrance, coming in and out through here. So that, 
I think, is the inside of St. Bertolins. You just see also over the entrance of the Crew Chapel, the Crew Banner, that is the, the banner of Lord Crew. So, go ahead and go around outside now. And so here we are now outside at St. Bertolins. You can see just how impressive a building it is, this great square west tower, this clerestory and the, the chapel here, the Crew Chapel. And it's a building that's designed to impress. It says this is an important place, and obviously because it's the actual church, the only church dedicated to St. Bertolin, it would have been something of a place of pilgrimage. Now, he's an obscure saint, so not a massive pilgrimage place, but still, you have this point, we are St. Bertolin's church. And Bartlemy, of course, the name of the village, comes from St. Bertolin. So we'll have a look around the outside and point out some of the features, including the few little bits of surviving Norman work.
So there we go, that's Myrtleins Bartlemy. Wonderful example of a particular type of church. You find a number of these up and down Cheshire. Some of them are in towns, some of them like here in little villages. But they all tell us something about how wealthy the county was in the late Middle Ages. And also something about the, the piety of the, particularly the, actually the landowning classes who paid large amounts of money for these buildings. Now sometimes it was, of course, out of this idea, well if we spend a lot of money on a church we shall be good, yeah, guaranteed God's favour, but also some of it was a, a sort of genuine piety. And of course somewhere like this you've got this local saint who is being honoured. And also some of it is just the, the pride of the village that we are Bartlemy, we have this connection that nobody else has to this admittedly obscure saint and so we celebrate our importance as a village by building something like this. Well thank you for watching, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed this and may God bless you and keep you until next time.